Welcome everybody to ELEC 1100 Circuit Analysis 1 Parallel Circuits Online. This is part two of chapter six presentation online. You should be reading sections one through eight. And uh, we did cover current voltage and resistance in the last part. We might do that real quickly again, but we're going to concentrate and focus on power, Kirchhoff's current law, and the current divider rule. So here's an example. It's example three in your textbook. It has three resistors in parallel. What's different about this one is that we have an unknown value, R3. And also the, the source voltage is unknown. So we want to determine R3 using the total resistance formula. We have three resistors in parallel, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R2, three equals one over RT. We plug everything in we know. We do know we have 4 ohms total resistance. So we can solve the unknown R3. So we get 10 ohms there. The second thing we want to do is solve for E. We know that the voltage is the same across all these resistors. We do know using Ohm's law there's two of the things that we do know. We know current and resistance. So the total, the, uh, the voltage equals current times resistance. So it'd be 4 amps times 10 ohms, and we get 40 volts. So now we know that 40 volts is across all three of those resistors. To find the, the, uh, the source current coming out of the battery, it is the total voltage, which we just found, 40 volts, divided by the total resistance. And we did find, we do know the total resistance is 4 ohms. So we get 10 amps there, volts divided by resistance. Now we want to find I2, and I2 is simply the voltage divided by 20, 40 volts divided by 20. What is I3? We could use this, that we know that I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals the source current. And we plug in everything we know except for I3, and we can solve for I3 as 4 amps. Power distribution in a parallel circuit. All power is accounted for. Power just doesn't disappear. So all the power consumed by each component will be added up to equal the total power. So this looks very busy, but let's concentrate here on our circuit. We have 28 volts across three resistors. So they each have the same voltage across them. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. Find I1, which is the source voltage divided by R1. 28 divided by 1.6 K, 17.5 milliamps. And I did that for each one. So 28 volts divided by 20 K, and then 28 volts divided by 56 K. And I get all these values, and I can add them up to get the total current of the source current if I wanted to at this point. Um, the second thing we want to do is find the power. We can use all these formulas for computing power in a DC circuit. Volts times current is a popular one, but also V squared over R, or I squared R. So for resistor R1, I can multiply the volts across it, which is 28 volts, times I1, which we found earlier, and I get 490 milliwatts. And I do the same with R2, 28 volts times 1.4 milliamps, and I get 39.2 milliwatts. And the same for R3, and I get 14.2. 14 milliwatts. I add them all up, that's my total power because all the power is used up and that's uh, energy conservation. Now other ways to compute that is V squared over R. So I have to use V squared over R1 to find the power in R1. And I get 490 milliwatts just like we did in R1 here. And I did it for, for this one, 28 squared over 20K, 20 28 squared over 56K. So they're all the same, proving this is valid. And also the last one, I squared R. So I take the current on each path. So the, the, uh, the current I1 going through 1.6K. And so I multiply, I square that current and multiply it times 1.6K, I get 490 milliwatts. So they're all equal. So I did that throughout. Now, when I added all those currents, I get 19.4 milliamps. 
Um, I want to come back to this in just a moment. So if I find the total resistance using this formula, R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, I get 1.5K, and I use that as R prime in my formula here, times R3, R prime plus R3, and I get, I get this value, 1.4K. If I plug that into my source voltage divided by my total resistance, I get 20 milliamps. Very close to here, there's a slight difference due to rounding. But I just wanted to show you that you could use many ways to skin a cat. So now we're going to introduce Kirchhoff's current law. And we introduced the uh, voltage law in, in uh, earlier chapters. In Kirchhoff's uh, current law, what goes in must come out. Or we could say the algebraic of the currents entering and leaving a junction of a network is zero because they're both equal. Let's look at this example. I have a complex system right here. And I have 4 amps going in and I have 8 amps going in. The rest are going out. They must equal 12 amps. And I see that they do. 2 amps plus 10. So with, with current in a closed circuit, what goes in must come out. 12 amperes in, 12 amperes out. Here's an analogy of wa a water stream. We have a, a bunch of water going here. We, we go to two tributaries. This one's a little smaller. This one's bigger. And this is kind of like the idea. We've got six amps coming into this node. And then it breaks off into two amps and to four amps. But you notice that four plus two equals six. What goes in goes out. Just to further this example, I have three amps going in here to node A. I got two amps coming into node A. So that's 5 amps right here is I3. And then at B, 5 amps is hitting. I don't know what this one is, but this one coming in is 1. So if I know this is 5 amps here, and this is 1, I have to have 6 going out. So we use this term node here. It's a junction uh, of two or more branches. One more time. We have uh, to look at Kirchhoff's current law. We have 5 amps hitting node A. It breaks up into here and here. This is given to me as 4, so that therefore this must be 1 hitting B, and 1 must be coming here to D. I also know that 5 amps is going in. I need to have 5 amps going out. So if I have 1 amp here and 4 amps here, I got 5 amps going out. Kirchhoff's current law. Now we're going to look at uh, the current divider rule. For two par parallel elements of equal value, the current will divide equally. So if I have a parallel circuit with, with both of them have two ohms, the current will be the same in both of those paths. For parallel elements with different values, the smaller resistance will get the greater share of the input current because there's less resistance to current flow. And for parallel elements of different values, the current will split with a ratio equal to the inverse of their resistant values. I want to look at the current divider rule. There's two types that we can use. This is type 1. And this one says I1, which is this path right here, is equal to the opposite resistor, R2, times the total current coming into the node over these two added, the resistors added. If I wanted to find I2, I use the opposite resistor, R1, and then I use the same uh, the, the current coming into the node, IT, over R1 plus R2. So that's type 1. Here's another one. This is type 2. I, have, um, I want to find the current X. That could be I1 or it could be I2. So if I say it's I1, then RX must be R1. And this total resistance is these two in parallel. And then the current is what comes into the, the node. We'll go through a couple examples here. Or at least one example. I have six amps coming into this node and it branches off into two. So I'm going to use type 1. I1 is equal to IT, which is six amps, times the opposite resistor, which is 8K. So I'm going to go six times 8K over these two added. 4K plus 8K. And I get 4 amps for I1. For I2, it's this source current coming in, or IT, the total current, or the source current's the same. 
and that is 6 amps times the opposite resistor so that one there would be 4k and then I'll add those on the bottom on the denominator so I get 2 amps so 4 plus 2 equals 6 and that's true now if I try the other type I have to find what the uh, resistors are in parallel and so I have 4k times 8k over 4 K plus A K, I get 2.67 K. I'll plug that in here for RT. And I have 6 amps coming in. And I have 4 K, that's the resistor of interest because I want to find I1. So I use 4 K there. And I get 4 amps. On finding I2, I put 8 K in there. And I get 2 amps. And I sum those and I get 6 amps. I got the same answer, both methods. Whichever one you want to use. Now here I'm going to look at Kirchhoff's current law plus we're going to introduce the inverse proportion for current resistors. So pay attention to this. This is the fundamentals of uh, electrical engineering here. So I want to determine I1 and R1. So R1 is not given and I, uh, I2 is not given. So I want to find I2 and R1. And I'll, also what magnitude of current flows from A to B? So I know if I have 27 milliamps coming in, I need to have 27 milliamps coming out. So 27 minus 21 will give me the 6 milliamps here. So that's this area here, the Kirchhoff's current law. The sum in equals the sum out. The source current equals I1 plus I2. And I end up with 6 milliamps on I2. Now another interesting thing is the inverse, inverse proportion for current resistors. So if I have I1 is the I2, then I have to do the inverse for the, for the resistor. So I put R2 on top is the R1. I1 is the I2 is R2 is the R1. And I plug in everything I know. The only thing that's unknown is R1. And I can figure that and be 2 ohms. So there you go. There's some fundamentals, fundamental principles there to learn. Now one thing we wanted to uh, talk about here is batteries in parallel. We can put two batteries in parallel if they are the same value. And what advantage do you get? You get, you get more current because you get current from both batteries. This would be the equivalent circuit. I1 plus I2 is your source current coming out of there. What you don't want to do is to put resistors of different values in your circuit. That can, that can be a, a core, uh, that could be a problem. If they're placed in parallel of different voltages, both will become ineffective and damaged because the battery at the larger voltage will rapidly discharge through the battery, battery with the smaller voltage. And that's the reason why when you change batteries, you want to change them all at one time. So if you have two lead-acid batteries of different values, what happens is, using Ohm's law, you get the voltage is 12 minus 6, and the resistance are these two here added and I get 120 amps so you get a lot of surge of high current very dangerous and it's always recommended that when you replace batteries in series or parallel replace all the batteries for homework do problems 14 22 23 25 33 34 37 and 38 all the odd numbers the answers are in the back of the book all the best to you